Welcome back to High Five Garage. Okay, on to something else. Let's try and figure out what bolts we need to bolt the transmission up. Hello, Burbos. Do you want to help? Do you want to help? No. Yeah. All right, so the starter did come with the correct bolts. We got long bolt that goes through, goes into that spot where it threads in, and then the bottom one threads into the transmission. As far as the other side, it actually goes through the motor and threads into the trans. It is the exact same thread. And when I measured it, we need one and three quarters to one and seven eighths, somewhere in that area, plus a washer of like shank and threads. The bottom ones, there's two bottom ones here, um, need to be able to slip into here, go through, and then thread into the block. So I measured them out, and they need to be anywhere from one and seven eighths to two inch, plus two washers, and they are the same threads as the one for the starter. And then the two top ones that actually mount the trans to the bus, um, it just had like bolts going through it, they weren't correct. So we need two of those that are three inches plus washer, and they are the same threads. I checked on the bracket over there, they are the same threads. They actually, it's got a nut welded to the actual um, mount, so. That's what we need to go get. If you've only been watching because of my uh, Volkswagen content, well, this is another one of my cars. 1983 Toyota Corolla wagon, SR20 CD09 with an S1 sequential and a 488 rear end. Um, those are two, three of mine as well. We got the Audi, we got the bike I just got, and then a Tacoma. But today, let's take the Corolla to get some butts, get some bolts for the bus transmission and motor. Alright, as I said, this is my 1983 Toyota Corolla wagon, S1 sequential on a CD09 six speed, SR20, and yeah, fuel cell, battery. Alright, let's go get some bolts. this car I've got a few videos back quite a bit of videos back talking about it and answering some questions so go check it out some stuff okay I got all the bolts and washers uh, a few of them are a little bit longer than I want but better longer than shorter I'll just cut them down if I have to and we'll be good just got home now we got the bolts we can move on to something else probably cleaning because that's still what needs to be done
Next up for some cleaning is the mustache bar. I do have two. One is from that motor. It was on it when we got it. And the other one came out of the bus. So I'm pretty sure it used to be on the two liter. The one out of the bus is complete. It does have the side plates. Um, I don't think there is a difference between them, but I'm probably just gonna use this one because I know it fits or should fit on that bus. Also, those are the two, uh, I guess, motor mounts that I found in the bus as well. They're brand new, so I'm gonna use them. This bar is definitely uh, directional. It curves one way. So I'm gonna have to look back in my videos and see how it sat on that motor or just research it online. But yeah, it's gotta clean all that up and paint it. I'll just make it easy for you guys. Well, it came out pretty sweet. Nice and clean. Okay, something new to work on. Uh, which alternator? Um, so this one was an extra one in the bus. It seems like it's roughly the same. The housing is just a little different. And when I say that, uh, there's a big old oval port here, and there, or a circle port, and then there's like an oval port. That's for the like a little bit of air that cools it down. So besides that, I think it's identical. Actually, it is. Um, wiring's all the same, except there's no black wire. That's the only difference. But these two are identical. This one came out of the bus. This one came off the spare motor. And wiring-wise, they are identical. Mounting-wise, they are identical. The only difference is the pulley, which is interesting. This one's got a smaller edged pulley. Not sure why, but it does. I know this one came off the motor I'm building, so that's the one I'm gonna install since the wiring is the same. The only difference um, is the blue wire has this connector and this wire doesn't, but I'll either take one off of there or just figure out how to put this to the wire that's in there. There's a blue wire over there that has a same female connector must go to it i'll figure it out it also looks a little cleaner besides like the reddish orange on the back dang that came out so good heck yeah one thing i did real quick was the coil bracket might as well if i'm doing everything else right one thing i want to do before putting the trans and motor back in is uh replacing the fuel line so it's got some old very brittle fuel line you know we cleaned out the tank we you know it's all good so i got these filters i'm gonna put a filter before and after probably but um i got this 5 16 fuel hose from o'reilly's i got seven foot of it i know that's probably excessive but um yeah i just wanted to have enough the bus does have an electric pump there it is i tested it it worked and what i'm gonna do I'm gonna run the line to these little white, whatever, little clippy boys. Fuel line's gonna go to there. Filter is gonna be sitting somewhere there. And then it's gonna go to this side. The other side is normally a return from the EFI stuff from the fuel pressure regulator. So I'm just gonna be capping that. lines from the tank are all complete the one that is normally a return I put just a piece of fuel hose two clamps and that's not a bolt it's an actual like cap that goes in there so that should be good and then coming out of here goes straight to a filter I know we're gonna be changing that out and then runs down goes on the little clippy boys that one broke so it's got zip ties holding it goes around those lines into the pump pump goes out goes through here that's where it was before and then back through and then I just tucked it up there because it's gonna be in the way when we put the motor in but and then that line is capped as well so that 
nothing gets into it. Also, um, a guy online I posted uh, told me what that is, which is awesome. It's a voltage regulator, so that's cool. I looked on the alternator, and it has the plug that goes into there. It's a little uh, three-prong. And then also, that wire, I'm pretty sure, is the one that goes to the alternator as well. It's got one extra wire, so makes sense. Now that I know some of the wiring is working, and I did get the starter wire working, this pink one can go bye-bye. I don't know, you know, they just kind of probably shoved it down the panels, but I want to take it out. Now I want to start repairing some of this AC add-on junk. And um, so the front one broke off. Both sides broke off. It's plastic. It's out here. It was in the heat. Um, there's the two holes, other holes on the side. What I'm going to do is, because this one was so close, I'm just going to move it over a little bit, smooth out that edge, drill two new holes, and then on the other side, make a plate that holds it up. It'll only be over half an inch and that will solve the problem and it'll hold it up. That side is all secure. I'll clean up the edge in a second. Holding this side up by the visor. But, so now I just need to make a piece that fills that area. Now that I got a template, got the two holes, I'm gonna make that out of metal. There's the piece I need to cut. That's supposed to be a straight line. That's why I just left that. So. Remember, mark it, and then, bam, I know these are my two dots because I put some a little like stud through it. Okay, just need to cut that piece out. And it's going to be something-ish like that. So right away I can see I need to bend it here. I drilled some holes in it, and I dropped everything, not thinking about it, Ugh. but that's uh didn't crack that side, so that's good. So, holes line up, which is awesome. Heck yeah. Okay. I'm happy with that. I think that's pretty dang good. That ain't going nowhere. Awesome. I will paint that white when I'm done with this whole endeavor. Now, it's time to do this piece. Probably just some angle, same kind of like sheet metal. Just angle it and it should work out all right so it's not the prettiest but i think once they're painted white they won't be as noticeable i mean that one came out amazing but simplest solution for here is some little angle brackets um, i used a little like a poker and i heated it up and that's what gave me new holes to drill into and then bam this side is somehow still held up by the original stuff so until those break i think That'll be fine. I think that's gonna do it for these panels. Um, they're not the prettiest, but it holds it up. So, obviously, I showed you that one. That one came out really cool, I'll paint it white. The ones up here aren't the prettiest. I kinda just did some angle pieces. Um, yeah, that was kinda just best case, I guess. And then back here, just did some more angle pieces. I noticed when I curve the edges and stuff they look a lot better than just it being flat so i think i'll do that on the rest of those but it's up and pretty sturdy so that's awesome from here i mean i need to paint those white we need to clean the interior um eventually get some panels and stuff but focus is getting it nice and drivable and you feel comfortable driving in it so of course that's running and then cleaning so we still gotta do all that. Talking about cleaning, I think it's time to clean the front housing, front air, I don't know, whatever. The front part of the motor. Um, it's very, very nasty, especially inside. It's pretty bad. So ugh, I'm gonna work on taking this apart and clean it. Now, like everything else, time to do a lot of cleaning. Yay. After a little bit of time, they're all clean. The back one's not perfect, uh, but I did make sure to do the top real nice because that's all that's really visible. And then the front one's real nice. And then same thing, inside's nice and cleaned out. Oh, I'll clean that little bit right there, I see. Um, but nice and cleaned out. Don't forget to put the alternator 
boot, cooling boot th thing back in. Got that, and then it's got a little clip inside. And then there's also one that goes from the dipstick to the motor. Damn, that's a clean motor. <laughs> that's crazy. I can't wait to see the tins on it. And right there is where the grommet goes between the dipstick tube and fill and dipstick housing. And I'm not gonna install this whole front piece until heads and all the shielding and stuff is back on, but I just wanted to see how it looks. With that big piece complete, all we got left is the carburetor and its little quad thingy. So rebuild the carb, clean it, and clean up that elbow, four quad elbow. The intake tubes. Uh, I'll clean up the distributor a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, cleaning up one of these screens. I know one of them has a hole in it. And yeah, clean up the push rods before I put them back in. That's about it, besides exhaust. But I'm not sure what all I'm gonna do with the exhaust, because yeah, I could put some heat paint on it or whatever, but that stuff ends up coming off. So I think I'll just unbolt it all, new gaskets, blow everything out so that I know it's clear, and put it on the motor. Wait, I thought about something else. So these four studs that are on the one that came from the 2.0 in the motor, uh, in the 77 bus, those studs are what mount an AC compressor to it. It's part of it. And the one I just cleaned doesn't have them. So I need to transfer over the studs. I'm just gonna do the old double nut thing. Tighten one, back one pulls it out. The studs are transferred and I had to see it with some tins on it. <laughs> what a difference. I want this thing done and running. Um, I realized what tins I was missing. This one goes kind of on the side right here and the AC compressor fits right there. So that's why it's cut out. And then these two go underneath, uh, depending what exhaust you have. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to mod those or make them work or if they'll just work with the exhaust, but we'll see. And then this one is the correct one for an automatic. That is the, the rear of the motor. So that is the correct one for an automatic. So gotta clean them up. Paint. All right those parts are nice and clean and i started looking at the torque converter and plate i did clean it up this thing was pretty nasty but got the plate got the torque converter all cleaned up seems like it's still filled with fluid which is nice um and then i think may, i might have to shorten them a little bit but the original uh pressure plate to flywheel bolts thread in and work and I know they technically do the same thing so hopefully those will work since I hopefully have everything for the tor torque converter and the adapter plate I want to try and mate the transmission up to the motor with everything correctly and just make sure everything works before we put it in one thing I'm going to do is put the heads back on just in case I do need to turn the motor um the jugs don't pop out. So what I'm going to do is get the motor off the engine stand. It's going to end up going back on there to get everything put back together, but I'm really quick going to take it off. Already got the transmission inside. Going to put the plate on, put the torque converter on, and see how it mounts up. I'm going to clean the back of the block, take that plate back off, clean the back of the block, and lock tight and torque those, torque the plate on, because we won't need to take it back off. It does fit with the engine stand, so no reason to take it back off. Okay, definitely a lot better looking. So now I'm gonna use some Loctite and get that plate torqued in. All right, plate is on with some Loctite. It said 44 foot-pounds with a quarter turn. Kinda seems like a lot to me. So I did 44 and then a little more. Hopefully it works. So I was wondering how they were getting the bolts into the torque converter because normally you can slip like underneath and yeah that thing has holes but they're not really where you want them i guess they could be but then i realized there's this hole and it lines up right with those bolts so that might be how to connect it 
the torque converter. Neat. Cleaned off the splines as much as I could. All these come out and you can clean them, I think, except for the, the big one. Now, time to see if I can get the torque converter in. So inside, it looks like sets of gears. So whatever, top one or big one, middle one, and then I assume there's another smaller one down below. So yeah, it should just technically spline on. Let's see. All right. Let's see what happens. What fluid is gonna go everywhere. Okay. So far. Seems like that's in. Automatics. They're weird. So I kind of leveled the transmission out with a little piece of wood. So hopefully the motor goes straight onto it. I'm gonna lift the motor back up and see if we can get it to mate up to the trans. See what happens. Well, got the transmission bolted up. Everything seems to be real nice. Um, as expected, one of these bolts is gonna need to be shortened. I used two extra washers and there's still a little bit of play. So I'll be cutting that much out of this bolt to make it work. Um, as far as the starter bolt, really well i found a nut for this side so all i got to do is find a washer uh lower one seems to tighten all the way works out good this one same thing tightens all the way all good the other nut for the starter already works pretty well so the only thing that needs to happen now is i need to cut down some some uh pressure plate to flywheel bolts and make them work for the tor torque converter to the plate but i'll do that when i pull the trans off so but everything worked and these extra ones so this is just an extra because um it was in the bag that i bought the other ones with and then these two are for the trans mount that goes to the bus and they seem very long uh but the bracket is over here let's see did i order way too long i don't know so here's the bracket and let's try the other way so let's say there's a, yeah no that should i don't know those might be too long interesting i don't know i'm gonna look at that right now okay got the trans mount all figured out so this is the bolt i got and i don't know why i got this long of a bolt but i had these two bolts laying around they're identical which is really nice they don't hit the motor fully tightened um but that one would have been a little too long i probably could have cut it down and that was probably my thought but those work perfect put a lock washer on them good so now that can be taken back off put on the vehicle because that is good now it is time to separate everything and shorten the torque converter to drive plate bolts motor is separated again definitely a very easy process so i'm going to take off the torque converter i've got three of the old bolts for the clutch setup oh give me my fingers thank you and and it just starts pulling out all the rods <laughs> so there's literally literally individual rods on this automatic one two and then this one's solid oh it filled up again dang it i should have gotten a video so yeah there's the big or the middle one goes into that one and then i saw a tinier one down there and it's just got like sets of gears torque converters are so weird okay i'm gonna i i capped off that so hopefully it doesn't leak and then stick the torque converter on and hope i can get those bolts in so in saying that we need to take almost a quarter inch out of them and that'll be just about right. I got an extra one just in case, but quarter inch will tighten it up. Okay, let's try that. If you're ever cutting a bolt down, always uh, thread on a nut first and keep it on there so when you cut it, you can unthread it and remake the threads on the bolt. Now, if I thread this one on, 
there should be less than that plate width. Okay, I took a little bit more out of it, and now I'm happy with that. Okay, I cleaned a little bit more in here. There is so much dirt that comes out of this thing. They definitely had fun with it. But I'm gonna put the trans cross member mount back in. I remember that the threads were this way and it just slips in and there's two 17s. Now we can put the transmission back in. I got the two bolts for here. Um, I just need to get it under there and kind of position a jack and somehow get it up there. So with the combination of two jacks and a ratchet strap, I ratchet strapped the front, pulled it up, put the jack on the front and then tied to the back. Ratchet strapped it and got a jack on the back. Now I'm just gonna evenly move it up until I can bolt it in. This back mount kind of looks homemade, but I get the concept. Um, it slips into a little grommet area and then two bolts hold it to the frame. So transmission is up. Now I just need to complete hooking up everything to the transmission. Axles, shifter cable, uh, ground cable, that's about it. Axles are back in, as well as the ground cable on the driver's side. And on the passenger side, there is two bolts that holds the shifter cable up. But that's gonna do it for this video. I know this video was a lot of odds and ends, but in the long run, everything is the goal towards getting the 1977 bus running. Like always, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. High five out.